Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of my Become Unstoppable series. And as always, I've got an amazing guest for you, who I'm going to bring up for you. Now, today, I've got something a little bit different for you. I've got Sienny, who's, uh, she runs her own matchmaking dating agency. Hello, hello, here she is. Hi, hi, nice to meet you. And you, and we'll... We've hope, oh, we have got a guest already. We've got Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Um, and as the guests arrive, we will maybe ask them if they want to ask any questions because this is a very special one today because this is going to be all about relationships. So before we go anywhere, anyway, darling, do you want to introduce yourself and tell everybody what you do and what your business does and whatever you think might be useful for them to know? Uh, with pleasure. Thank you for asking. So I am Ksenia Droben. I am international matchmaker. Uh, I've doing it for 25 years and usually I tell to my clients don't ask my age. Don't try to count, count back. I totally enjoy it because it's this the best job ever where you can learn something new really every day every second every moment all this communication with people we are very successful in what we do we have a lot of couples a lot of babies what's also very important and now one more baby is on the way oh. and wow. it's really yes yes and you know it was really interesting and uh, one baby was born uh, one week ago so it's really uh, and I am very, very uh, thankful to uh, Facebook because sometimes people don't tell us about our successes, but following them on Facebook oh, <laughs> helps to know what is, what is really going on. Actually, I've got, I've got a baby too in terms of one of my clients who was really um, struggling to get pregnant. And we didn't actually work particularly on that. We worked on some other areas in her life. And we've been six weeks of finishing working. Bang. So I, I claim that I've got that. I've got a baby too. <laughs> you, 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 no, you can, you, can, you can start counting. Yeah. I only need one hand so far. But, you know, early days. So, my lovely, as you may or may not know, anyone that's watched my Become Unstoppable series, when I get my guests on, the very first question we really cover is... What does being unstoppable mean to you? Uh, I can say that unstoppable means for me really uh, all my life, all uh, 25 years of my life, because uh, as international matchmaker, I'm very dependable on what is going on in the world. Because my niche, of course, people with money, and I need stable uh, economy, that people able to pay money for our services. Four years ago, it started with COVID. So it means all my events in different countries, in different uh, cities, I couldn't provide anymore just because no flights anymore. And, you know, first the idea, oh, should I close my agency? Oh, you know, so crying first, but second, yeah, okay, but online it's, it, it's possible as well. And we started doing little parties. Okay, little parties, boring, and people have not much choice. We started doing big online parties their biggest was 250 people so it's 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 going on and going on now it's political situation russia russia and ukraine but we still found the solution uh, we uh, advise people how to travel we always you know in searching okay it's not possible to do straight but maybe there is another way so being unstoppable really is about every time there's an issue that's thrown at you rather than give up or go away and just cry you go okay let's think of a solution that we can move around this little obstacle and, and move forward that's amazing yeah absolutely yeah. And it's nowadays uh, so in, in two weeks i'm flying to kazakhstan with uh, t tv team so uh, filming team from austrian television because they also uh, used to travel to belarus to ukraine to russia it's not possible right now so they now kazakhstan far away absolutely country nobody knows I, i've never been there but why not, why not? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Why not? we don't know what we don't know do we as the saying goes uh, absolutely you never know what opportunity opportunities around the corner 
And I think that's what I love about being part of all our different groups that we're part of. Because we we met at our business um, coaching sessions, didn't we? And that's an amazing community because it's just full of like-minded people because we're all wanting, we've all got different businesses and all at different stages, but we've all got that same idea that we want to be successful. We want to be successful entrepreneurs and we all, all have that similar mindset, don't we? And being around those sort of people really helps because, and that's kind of what we're saying here, isn't it? That if you're around people that don't want you to grow or they're negative, then you just, you just don't need to be around them people, do you? Have you found that in your life? Uh, uh, yesterday I had a webinar for women because I have once a week for girls and once a week for boys. And I got really interesting questions. The woman wrote, um, I've been single for 10 years. I've done everything what's possible, a cosmetologist, makeup, fitness, all possible and possible psychologists, coaches. I met many men, but it doesn't work. What to do? Because, yeah. you know, yeah, it's, it's really something. Ah, okay. So, and I said, you know what? You, you have to turn back and start with little steps, not just messing around and searching for anybody. Think about what do you want? Maybe you don't want anybody. So that's why it doesn't work. So what I've, with a lot of my clients that I work with, when we go through what I call what their symptoms are, many of them tick the box about relationships. Now, they tick that for many reasons. Sometimes it's because they've got really bad relationships, maybe with their children, with their partner, with their parents, maybe even with work colleagues or people in their business. And, and relationships has such a knock-on effect all round, doesn't it? It's not, it's not just about a love interest relationship. But what I've also found is when we've got because so, the work I do basically is I go, I use hypnosis and I take them, regress them back to a time when relationships first become an issue for them. And a lot of the time it goes back to zero and seven years of age because that's when we create our belief system, but we don't have the logic, right? But if you've been brought up in an environment of poor relationships, it could be that dad left home, I felt abandoned, so I'm therefore I'm unlovable. My mum was with multiple different partners, um, no one cared about me. I didn't feel good enough because no one listened to what I said, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it quite often goes back all the way down their timeline. So you must find that really difficult when you're working with your customers because a lot of them would be suffering from that kind of belief system. So how do you kind of help them when it, sometimes it must feel like you've got to knock your head against a brick wall because <laughs> it's just not getting in when when you spoke about this uh, you know timeline and our experience being children we say in russian language we have saying doesn't matter how hard you try to uh, grow up your children they will always have reason to speak to psychologist <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's uh, and uh, you know and uh, compared to you and me we were children we had absolutely harder childhood compared to children uh, right now and our parents didn't think about oh it will it hurt you go out and do whatever you want so it's and i don't know what's right to spoil children uh, like we do now or our hard childhood when we watch children i don't know what's better the life uh, will show but of course uh, my clients uh, quite many especially who have been single for a long time it's for reason sometimes i can immediately see where is the reason and can can give uh, quick advice and it helps sometimes i say and say and say and after it i say you know so you know what i give you a lot of advice i wash my hands mm. especially especially for me it's very complicated when i see that this couple doesn't work because he or she makes mistakes and sometimes it's very um, necessary or important to say no i'm not doing this now i don't agree with you it's not my world it's not my it's not my idea about perfect relationship but people prefer to stay and do what the partner wants and after it of course they struggle because they spoiled their partners 
and gave too much. I, th I think sometimes, I, th I think what you're saying, like kind of back in the day with our parents' parents, it was you was in a relationship and you stayed in it, whether it was right, wrong or indifferent. Whereas now we have choice. We can, we can choose to leave relationships, not always, obviously, but in general, don't we? So I think it's kind of like a double-ended saw. Sometimes we do live in a bit of a throwaway society where we don't always maybe work on things as hard as we could do but then equally having the freedom to get out of a relationship if it doesn't work is also a good thing as well isn't it but i, I guess it's to have that choice you know i think it's it's uh, it's difficult to say it depends on situation but having choice to get out of relationship it means i i even don't try to rescue it Mm -hmm. I even don't try to find solution. And the important thing, this couple came together because of the reasons. So it means from the beginning they loved each other, they felt patient to each other, they wanted to be together. And over the time, they lost because of all their troubles, money, I don't know, a lot of reasons, stop listening to each other. But instead of turning back and say, you know, we started as perfect couple, why... 10 years ago, we don't talk anymore. Oh, mm -hmm. like Tinder. Okay, swipe, swipe. What? Yeah, yeah. It is difficult. I mean, I'm on my second marriage, so I'm not going to be a hypocrite in, in all of this. But, um, yeah, different horses for courses. But what I think is a shame is from what, you know, what I've learned from my clients is the fact that if they worked on themselves first and foremost, and uncovered their limiting beliefs around relationships. Um, and what I do is I, we identify that limiting belief, we eradicate it, and then we replace it with new empowering beliefs. And then we start doing the vision inside of things, like what would your life be really like if you was in this most amazing relationship? Because you can have it all. People think they can't, but you can. But you have to be thinking it and feeling it and knowing what you want and putting it out there to you know whatever you see your higher higher self your intuition god the universe whatever people you know whatever people want to do but it's about visioning and going do you know what that's what i want i want that relationship of my dreams i deserve that that's what i want but the problem is they don't their belief system doesn't match that so although you, you might use the words that's what i want that's what i deserve but in here you don't believe it so therefore you still attract the wrong type of relationships and therefore do not attract the right type of relationship to give you that dream and that vision absolutely agree because if you don't believe what is in our head and what is uh, with our body if it's not in balance it will not work so it should be in the head and in the feelings but you know the problem is what uh, I, I like these limiting beliefs because we all have them and it's very important to uh, get them to understand them because uh, only in in then you can you can fight against and probably win uh or triggers is one of my favorite topic topics how to how to fight against our triggers but what would you say if somebody will come to you and say you know julia my limiting belief uh, i don't know i'm too old and uh, you know so people uh, around the world they don't search such such old blocks uh, as, as i am so first of all i'd say age is just but a number Point number one, <laughs> we shouldn't get caught up in how old we are because it is just a number, right? And if you keep saying, I'm old, I feel old, well, guess what? The universe is just going to go, Yeah, you are old, you're not, you know, don't bother. So you start, you think, you think like an old person, right? My dad, God love him, right? He's 83, 84, I lose track now. He's got this bulbous knee, he can barely walk, right? And now he just he cuts grass for old people, right? But what he got he, recently, he's been falling over because he can't support himself. And we're saying to him, you need to get a stick, Dad. And he's going, I ain't getting a stick. I'm not old enough for a stick. That's going to make me look old. But you keep face planting yourself, Dad. You need something. 
and he's like you won't you won't have it but that's that's the difference isn't it versus someone who is i don't know 50 60s going oh i'm too old i'm too old no it's all in here right as long as you can move and your brain works and your body works to a point and there's always someone for everybody out there well, i really believe that and again it's about putting that out to the universe isn't it and saying do you know what i'm worthy i deserve this i deserve to find someone they might be younger than me they might be older than me but if you're putting it out there and asking for the the person that matches you i.e someone who also knows that they are enough and you're ready to receive love then you can have whatever you want okay so our next question we make it compli more complicated what would you say if you have uh, uh, if you have somebody and taking box relationship and this you know mostly men because i work with men more with men than with, with women and he said you know so i'm let's say 60 and i want to have a child and i deserve you know like you said i deserve a woman who, uh, who is uh, 25 years younger than me what would you say because you understand that it's uh, complicated so it's uh, complicated <laughs> but so you, you, you say you, was, the man was 60 was he the man was 60. my eldest my uh, so the elders who asked me this question you know good that you are sitting he was 67. wow it was on the phone so fortunately he couldn't see my face because i, <laughs> <laughs> I, I said okay <laughs> so, because first of all i always say okay <laughs> but <laughs> well yeah. i mean if it's a, if it's a man who's older obviously men can reproduce at a much older age than women can't they in theory so sure i mean there might be a woman out there who's younger who wants a an older man <laughs> a very older man but but she would be putting it out to the universe anyway right so that's fine and they they would come together if it was around the other way and the older woman wants to have a child then the only way that's going to happen god bless her is to meet someone who's already got a family right so you go down the blended family route and and do it that way or likelihood they might even have grandchildren at that point but um I, I just i just think don't put barriers in if you want something you want it badly but you you can't just say it though you have to really focus on it and you really need to think about it you know put it out there and feel it in your whole body not oh do you know what today i think i have a baby and and that's that you know it doesn't work like that it's not you don't literally just do your shopping list and it just appears the next day you have to really want something right same with money we all get caught up in money mindset right money's not available see this is because it all goes back to beliefs right money's not available to me money grow, doesn't grow on trees who do you think you are you're not bright enough you're not clever enough all this sort of beliefs be happy, that we be happy that you get be happy uh that you get so much money as you get because other people struggle and have no food so it's again be happy yeah appreciate what you have yeah. don't grow yeah. up don't don't wish more exactly and and people you know you mentioned it right at the beginning didn't you about you know you're trying to run a business and you you want to earn a good living from it and that's absolutely fine the same with me right people think oh well because you help people and you're a therapist that you shouldn't really earn a lot of money for it why not I have spent thousands, literally thousands, and still doing it. Um, I don't even, I, I, I open my bank account and bank statements with my eyes closed now, right? This is someone who always paid her bills off. I was always a saver. But once I got into becoming an entrepreneur and invested in myself, I've invested in my personal development hugely. I've invested in my business, like building my business, and as you are, business coaching, value, and, and big, big business events, etc. But I've, I'm doing ongoing training all of the time because I just want to grow. I just want to grow as a person and I want to grow so that I can help my clients to be even, you know, to help them even better, quick, more quickly, more, give them more ideas and tools and techniques, right? So why, why do I deserve, why do I not deserve to earn well from that? <laughs> But you know, so it's what, what you mentioned, it's really interesting thing because of course I get this accusation as well. You want money only. And it's, uh, s uh, sometimes many years I thought, yeah, maybe I have to do a lot of for free for people. And I still do really a lot of, uh, we have a lot of free services in my agency. But you know, if you uh, feel guilty 
for wanting money, but it's absolutely natural. It's it's also a limiting belief, but in in other way, it's something like mm. I have to give more than than I get, and it stops you. Mm. Yes, it's business. If you want to, you pay. If you don't want to. There is Tinder, or you, in your case, YouTube tutorials. Watch it on YouTube, on TikTok, and uh, uh, treat yourself uh, for free. There is always the way. <laughs> what to do? And this is it. And, and what many therapists, including myself, I'm, I'm in a group of loads of therapists as well, and most of us are all the same, right? It's having um, been able to receive. We're really good at giving giving out our love, giving out our support, like you say, make, doing a lot of stuff for free. But when it comes to receiving, it's harder. So I've had to really learn to open up my heart to receiving because I before I did all this, I worked in the corporate world for over 35 years and, you know, I did okay. I, I was earning good money. So when I went into my business, I thought, well, I don't want to suddenly be living on the bread line. I, I want to carry on living the life that, I've been having but with abundance with bells on I want to be earning as much money as I can helping as many people as I can but also so I've got more time for myself as well you know and it's about putting yourself first and this is one of the things I tell my clients all the time you have to put yourself first it's it feels like it's selfish doesn't it especially if you've got a family of children and things like that but if you don't then you can't, you're not going to be strong enough and healthy enough to help everybody else. Absolutely, absolutely. We say, uh, there is a Russian saying, uh, happy mother, happy mm -hmm. children. Because if you are a healthy mother, healthy children, so there are a lot of variations. Because if you, uh, if you struggle yourself, if you cannot find balance with yourself and with your character, how can you be helpful, at least for your family? Okay, so in, in, in some jobs you don't have to give anything because you just sit with your laptop and just type something. Okay, in, in your job, in my job, we have to be positive because it's uh, the uh, way to give people acknowledgement, affirmation, support them, and, you know, all, all this stuff. So for, you, you have to start with uh, first with yourself. Exactly, yeah. And uh, you must find that a lot with when you get these... Like, like your clients when you review the information and you speak to them you must find that there's a lot of people that you just think oh my god you just don't believe in yourself you've just got no confidence what, what you know just, just, just because i'm a maker and i am coach i'm not psychologist uh, so i have my i think it's my inner ethic i don't say if i haven't been asked right so if they ask me Xenia, can you tell me why it doesn't work? Then I say, oh, yes, wow, my moment. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Now, it, you know, write down, <laughs> write down. But I, I really have to wait until they ask. And I, I really try to avoid something like, you know, you, you have to work on your self-esteem. I give little... Have you tried probably to uh, write your message a little bit different? Mm -hmm. Have you tried to maybe not to uh, wait? uh for to, to be asked for a video call maybe you offer this video call yourself oh really it works i am so happy because it's it's a little step i i really like this uh, um theory or this uh, method about little step because if you say you have to be this you have to be that you have it it's difficult to start with and people most of the time they just give in but if you say a oh, little step you task for now to get one video call a month mm. you got it you are perfect you know mm. like soldier got got on your on your shoulders okay next next step you have to get video call once a week got it you're god you're god you're the best <laughs> so, so it's really because every every time if people uh, get over their beliefs waters and do something a little bit different they remember this feeling you you said it you said it they remember remember this feeling and it's the way to uh, to achieve something more yeah yeah it, it's everything that's outside their comfort zone and i guess a lot of people have been in relationships for years and then find themselves out of a relationship i mean when i was single again after finishing with my first husband i was nearly 40 and it was like 
oh my god this is just like the worst nightmare i don't want to go clubbing didn't want to go clubbing much back in the day you know and it's like it was so hard i mean i, I, was, I say this in tongue-in-cheek i was quite lucky that some of my other friends at the time were also single and i don't mean that that i was glad that their relationships had ended but you know what i mean so we did sort of go out a little bit but yeah i ended up meeting my current husband on a, an online dating app actually so the, the world is the world has changed isn't it how about just get a curious question how many people do you think you've paired up do you reckon in the duration of your business would you have a clue about that sorry to put you on the spot it just come to my head i don't know i don't know because you know i have really very interesting memory i don't know if if i trained it or i just got it over the years so i really remember details about people but not maybe remembering these people so mm -hmm. something ah oh, okay so i don't remember your name i look at your photo and i know that you went to the event and you was asshole uh, and uh, women complain you never ever get any place in my agency because because i, I remember you mm -hmm. yeah so it's it's, it's really it's really very so and i always say because i run a lot of events and i have one one of my rules that i uh, host and moderate all my events myself it's my agency i am the face of this uh, madness and i i can tell you who went to event i don't know 10, ten years ago but maybe i don't remember the name yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. i know for sure that this face was and you know women complain or men complain so if someone's watching this right and they're currently single and they're looking for that this time is right for you for them now to get in a new relationship mm -hmm. how, what do they do and how what would you encourage them to do my darling um first of all i would uh, really sit with piece of paper and uh, have uh, honest conversation with yourself what i'm really ready to give in relationship we always want to know what you want to get the house the i don't know children and his money or her, her being sexy wearing heels we always know what we are going to get what can make us happy let's say it in other words but it's never feeling why do i need it am i really ready to let somebody in my life discuss uh, discuss everything and eat together and you know so all this uh, um, i don't know organization of uh, our family and really important to think what can i get can i give to this person and it's not about money I like and, that. and as soon you get this feeling it's really feeling i remember because i was on tinder and sometimes i had two days a day i don't remember their names i always thought about these guys oh you know if you come to me as if if you would come to me as a client i can help you but i am not so i'm not your much for now uh but as soon it was really okay but i know what i want huh? but what i am ready to give mm. it was really feeling and that. immediately mm. yeah that, that's that's a really good question and i bet that gets a lot of people going oh because it's it's really it's really here mm. and you know i it's it's not not wish list in there in there for for christmas it's something like it's it's serious you know other things having fun together and enjoying time and talking how to build up relationship it's technical it's it's science so there are a lot of books and there are a lot of methods how to do it it's simple but the really ground basement basic thing why why do I need it? Yeah, and it's probably worth thinking about when you when you've you know maybe not when you're younger so much, but as you get older and you maybe look at your past relationships, isn't it? And go, oh, hang on, how many how many relationships have I had? And what seems is there a common theme into what happens? Because if it's a case of sometimes my clients say to me, well, every time I get close, I just push them away. Right, so they, they can't seem to hold on to a relationship because once it gets comfortable or they start to feel that it's getting a little bit too, ooh, you know, a bit too, too much commitment, 
then they push them away and that's normally because they've got a history of that and there's something in them that i'm not good enough i'm not lovable that i'm way i'm not good enough for that person i hear that a lot oh they're way too good for me you know and that's a lot because they feel that they're not good enough so you know, do you see that no i i think i think it was not on the in our last uh gold circle session but previous it was something if you uh, i don't i don't remember who said it but it was if you're afraid to speak to their stars or to the celebrities you forget they are only people mm. it is it really helps because I'm thinking, oh, he's, he's a star in this field and this niche. Oh, I don't, but it's just a person. And I always say, sorry, I know it's, it's quite cruel. I always say, Brett, Pete, also farts. Mm. Because yeah. there are people, there are people, they have normal wishes, they have normal, uh, you know, all the issues so it means it means i think if you uh, if you put somebody somebody on this on the stage if you put somebody above of you this is the wrong thing it's just feeling we all are equal doesn't matter rich or poor or old or young and accept that all people are really equal I yeah think. i think very very good point and a lot of them are because they are used to being performers they perform under their mask and many, many of them suffer from mental health issues, you know, like Robin Williams, for example, George yeah. Michael, you know, people that should still be here, but they're not. And what happens is with a lot of them, I believe, I mean, I haven't worked with a famous client yet, but I've got it in my vision board that I will do. But I think what happens there is, they get to that point where they've been aiming for, but when they get there, there's just something missing because there's that element of them that they just didn't feel good enough and they don't deserve it. They don't feel deserving of it. And that's well, where it all goes a little bit spiraling down. And, and, and second, so what I believe, and uh, I believe that uh, talent is not norm. Talent that mm. People in music uh, or this artist or all this uh, or poets it's not normal it's exception mm -hmm. and just because they are exception they might have these uh, mental issues mm -hmm. maybe, maybe maybe I don't know if there are some researches about this uh, this topic but uh, you know it's uh, but and you know but it's also uh, our beliefs um, my favorite example uh, women women come to me and say I want what I want okay so what do you want I want him to be rich I want to have you know this real uh, yacht I always say okay okay got it but do you really believe that if he's rich, if he's millionaire, it means he will share his millions with you. It's not the same. There, are, there is his money, not yours. Mm -hmm. Having yacht, Bentley, villa, I don't know what private jet, it doesn't mean you will be part of his luxury. Yeah, true. <laughs> I, my, 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 uh, my friend, she's married uh, to one uh, millionaire, and uh, when she cooks, he comes to her and says, Oh, you put too much oil in the salad. Mm. So just imagine, too much oil in the salad in terms of money. So it's too much, not because it's oily, but just because it's, you know, it's waste of oil. Mm. Interesting. And I put so much oil, I want to. Very interesting. Money beliefs again, right? Money. Mm -hmm. uh, Money absolutely back. absolutely yeah. there are so many wrong beliefs and it's so uh, yeah your all day life my all day life yeah right darling believe it or not we've been on here 35 minutes almost i so just quickly then for anyone that watches this is watching this now or watches this on any form of replay where can people find you and what have you got coming up next? Uh, uh, okay, so I'm Ksenia Dropin. You can find me on Instagram. Probably it's, it will be somewhere written uh, that I was on, on your stream. Thank you very much for um, this amazing time. And just uh, drop me a message. We discuss everything. I explain what we do. We work in different countries. We have a lot of different possibilities.
is to meet the right person for big money, for less money, even for free. So just drop me a message and we'll discuss everything. Let's talk. Oh, that's really, it's been really lovely having you on today. Um, and I know you've been asking to come on here for a while, haven't you? So I was getting you organised, wouldn't I, to try and get you on here. So it's been really lovely speaking to you. And next, thank next, you everybody. Next, time, next time I have to invite you for, for my podcast and we'll speak about problems of my clients. Oh. Because re really a lot. Uh, really a lot and you know so it's never ending story i get this conf you know to my into my books i get the stories every day it's always something to discuss so <laughs> next time you are invited oh i love that thank you so much that'll be amazing um and also actually i'm going to be shortly launching a youtube channel so all my videos from my instagrams are all going to go on there as well so hopefully we can get some more viewers um seeking us out really because yeah for anyone who doesn't know me look on my social media as well um i've got a lot of testimonials now of proof of what i do but what i do is understand people's limiting beliefs we i i help you identify them we eradicate them there and then and then we replace them with new empowering ones that are permanent it is rapid and it is transformational and as my tagline says i help you to become unstoppable sometimes in 30 30 days right in one of my packet in 30 days how you know unlock your confidence in 30 days or less okay um so yeah come and join um both of us on our sites follow each other let any of your followers i'd love to start following me and vice versa and i look forward to seeing you on your podcast or at our next meeting that we go to together and Absolutely. thank you oh, thank, so you. thank, thank you thank you darling take care bye bye, bye.